we explore the rise of nation states in Eastern Europe. Another ethnic tribe that had moved into Europe were the Slavic people. They had settled in Central and Eastern Europe, but gradually divided into three groups in the West, South, and East. West Slavs became the Polish and Bohemian Czechs and were converted to Roman Catholicism by the Germans. Hungary, which had been ruled by the Magyars, also converted to the Latin Church. Southern and Eastern Slavs gravitated to the Greek Church of Byzantium. The Byzantine Empire was much like the Roman Church, in that they were also sending out missionaries into the empire. Two monks, Kirill and Matadius, converted Eastern Europe to the Greek Church and adapted Slavic cultures into the Church. The Southern Slavs were to be found in Croatia, Serbia, and Bulgaria. Croatia would go Latin and the others would go Greek. But the big story would come in the Far East when Eastern Slavs began to come in contact with a group of Swedish Vikings through the raids. Eventually, they all developed a trade relationship and the Slav knew them as the Rus. The Rus would settle in the area as it had a variety of long rivers and access to trade in Constantinople and the Islamic states. The Rus and Slavs would intermarry and become the Russian people. They centered their life under a ruler named Oleg in Kiev. The Byzantine missionaries arrived. The Rus leader Vladimir I would be the one who converted the entire Russian people to Eastern Orthodoxy in 988. The Russian people would expand from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea, from the Danube to the Volga, but would face a never-ending series of invasions and civil wars until their fall. For instance, in the 1200s, the Mongol Golden Horde would arrive on their dominating crush of Asia to occupy Russia. Russian princes were required to make tribute payments. One prince, Alexander Nevsky, would fight back against a German invasion and the Mongols would name him Grand Prince. His family would lead Russia into the future. <laughs>